Are you ready? Yes. Yes. John Packman Podcast. Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance, beautiful downtown Portland, Connecticut. Come over the bridge, go through one set of lights, pull a Yui, park in the street. Well, don't park in the street. For God's sake, park in a parking lot. In a parking lot. In a parking space like a person would do. Who am I Who am I mad at? Why, I sound like I'm mad at nobody. Anyway, like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. Tell your pets. Tell your plants. Tell your neighbors, plants, pets. And uh, you can have your very own podcast here in our beautiful studio. Dave will tell you how at the end of all this. We're here today with Connecticut Blue Society President, Mr. Scott Sebastian, is here. Hi. Yes, sir. What's going on? How you doing? Good. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Nice shirt. Look at that. They have, have shirts. That's pretty cool. Yeah. What is 11? Just a number that I happen to like. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Double ones, baby. Um, so that, I guess we talked about it. We'll start there. That's your title. But also, you are the... Vice president. Vice president. Of the Connecticut Rhythm and Blues Festival. Festival. Okay, that's cool. So that was... Uh, do you remember the Two Left Feet Blues Festival? I, I don't, but don't okay. hold it against so, me. Okay, so well, that was... Uh, it was actually a really big festival in Connecticut. Okay. Like, they brought thousands and thousands of dollars of talent in Walter Trout, like everything. Yeah, in. yeah. It was huge, but it never made money. In matter of fact, it lost a lot of money every year. Oh, boy. So it kind of went under, and um, the board of directors got together and asked my wife, Ellen, and I to take it over. Mm. And all we said was, okay, we're going to do it our way, though. And right. our way meant start small, build organically. Gotcha. So Gotcha. And how long have you been doing that? So we started that in 2019. Our first festival was supposed to be in 2020. Uh, of course, that didn't happen. Wow. And then 21 still wasn't really going to oh. happen. Uh, so we, we actually did our first one last year. We had Vanessa Collier uh, headline. Uh, it was an amazing event, and we raised a lot of money, which we gave to the Connecticut Blues Society's Blues Education Program, and we split the other rest of it with Musicians Lifeline. Nice. So nice. that's those are our causes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're all nonprofit with yep. the Connecticut Rhythm and Blues Festival. Um, this year we got an amazing lineup. It's going to be awesome. It's uh, what thirteen days from today, I think. Yeah, yeah November ninth. November ninth. Yep. Um, Trinity on Main, awesome old church. Yeah, uh, they converted into a performance space. Really well done. Uh, you know, it's just a it it holds probably about two eighty two ninety. Cool. Uh, you know that that kind of thing. Cool. Um, and we go from like two o'clock to like ten o'clock, and featuring John Nemeth as our headliner, and right before that is Solomon Hicks. Yep. Uh, right before that's Leanne Lovelace Band. This oh, is yeah. her ten piece original band. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then the we always give a spot to the winner of the Connecticut Blue Society Challenge, and that's Carl Ritchie and the Seven O Six Union Ave Band. Gotcha. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And so. <clears throat> is it you this is like only your what you said this was your second second one. year yeah so is this small enough to start yeah like yeah nowhere to go but up from here i mean just to give you an example last year we paid all of our acts yep we sold tickets we had sponsors and we were able to donate six thousand dollars hey that's pretty cool our first year we didn't lose money and we were able to donate so six you, grand. You, so they made the right move by getting you involved, apparently. Yeah, and, and because, I don't want to take too much credit because it's yeah. actually my wife, Ellen, who she's the president of that yeah. one. Oh, oh so uh -oh. Yeah, I kind of oh, do what I'm told oh, when oh, it goes boy. to that one. Uh, Excellent. But she's raising money to donate to the Blue Society, which is my little baby. So. Gotcha. Wow. But she's also on that board as well. So, so. this is like a blues laundering yeah, out yeah, outfit. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, wow. uh, you know, there's some confusion sometimes. Um you know, basically, the Connecticut Blue Society is a recipient of the money that we make, and it yep. goes towards our education programs, right. which is something we developed just within the last two years. Oh wow! Um, do you want to you want to talk about that? Sure. Yeah. So um, I took over as president almost two years now. So 2022 January, uh, there was a couple of initiatives that I wanted uh, to move forward, and one major one was blues education. Um, there's a lot of different programs out there with the Blues Foundation out of Memphis, but there is no structure. There's no one program that MemphisBlues.org says, here's your guideline. Okay. It, we're, it's basically the Wild West. Okay. So uh, we came up with a couple of ideas. Uh, one of them is, uh, this one was great. It's called Blues Jam 101. We got Dennis Cotton. Yep. Uh, his school. Yep. He actually put together a whole day event with kids to teach them how to go to a Blues Jam. What oh, to prepare, what nice. not to play, what yeah. to play, how to yeah. sign up, yeah. etiquette. 
Then we had nice. a uh, jam at the Pine Loft the following week, and I seeded it with every Blue Society, old timer, great person you can imagine. Yeah, yeah, we had yeah. like almost 20 musicians volunteer, Whoa. and the kids had to get up and play, and they did amazing. Oh, that's cool. And it was, you know, we were able to pay Dennis and his partner Mike yep. to do that job out of the fund. So we're helping support our musicians, but we're also bringing Blues Education in. Right. So the kids get, <clears throat> they get their first time out. Yep. With real people. Yeah, and it was it was great. And then we had a band from South Korea called Richie Man and Groove Nice. Um, I think I heard about that. They're awesome. They yeah. took number five in the International Blues Challenge yeah. years back. They come to America every year, and they come to this area, and they stay at our house. Oh, nice. We put them up nice. for two weeks uh, so they don't have to pay for hotels. Cool. We had them do a master class. Oh, boy. So they sat, and the kids had to – it was just great. You know? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun. That's cool. So no. that's that's the uh, – now you – well, I don't know if it's a curriculum, but like you say, now those are the ideas, things yeah. like that. So Dennis actually helped really create the curriculum for Blues Jam 101. I had the idea uh, and the concept, and he actually wrote it out and, like, handed out a book, and, you oh, know, cool. like, they had something to look at. And we had every – we had age 10 to 18. Wow. You know, there. Hey, that's cool. Uh, um, it was really good. Nice. Uh, the nice. other thing we did on the Blue Society was, um, uh, well, you know, we had a, somebody that we loved very much pass away, Mike Crandall. Mm. And when Mike died, his family, uh, mostly Kelly, his longtime partner, said, look, I want to have a celebration of life. Um, would the Blue Society help? And I said, absolutely. They said, we're not going to do a funeral or wake. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. what he would have wanted. I got you. So yeah. we did it at the old well, and then uh, the idea kind of bopped around, and uh, we made an arrangement to start a Mike Crandall Scholarship Fund. Hey, there you go. Uh, that day, we raised thirty four hundred dollars nice. for that fund. Nice. That fund now we just did a benefit last Sunday, a week ago Sunday at uh, Norwich Arts Center. Okay. We raised seventeen hundred dollars there. Nice. That fund now has over seventy five hundred dollars in it. Pretty cool. And we're going to give a $2,000 a year scholarship every way, every year. Nice. So uh, we're still working out the details, but the goal is to give that scholarship out at the end of March at the uh, Blues Blizzard. Nice. Nice. So um, That's cool. You we're know? getting it done, getting things done. We're getting done. it done. Yeah. You know? That's uh, cool. We uh, When I took over, we had 106 members at the Blues Society. We're now over 500. Whoa. So they made the right move. Um, You're getting things done. You, you know what it was is we were on a very archaic like spreadsheet system that, you know, you would come up and say, hey, Scott, did I pay my dues? And I'd go, I don't know. I yeah, have no yeah, idea. Let me yeah. let me ask somebody with the magic spreadsheet. Um, we invested. I convinced the board, but we invested in a software platform. Yeah. yeah. So now they just go to ctblues.org. Mm -hmm. And they, they get an email that says, "Hey, your your twenty bucks is due." Yeah, you yeah, know, or whatever. You know, yeah. It's automatically going to come out. And yep. by doing that, we now have a very good list of all of our members. We email them every week with all of our uh, events that are happening. Our right. News list. So just infrastructure. Yeah, just. we built that. It's our website. It's our um, membership software. It's a portal, which we're not even really using that much. Um, it it could do all our events. It takes our credit cards. It does our processing. You know, it's twenty five hundred bucks a year. But it's well worth right, it. Right, because you're, you're keeping everybody in the loop. Yeah, it's well worth it. And now the money's flowing in. That's the way it's supposed to be. You know, and most of, when I talk to people, I ask, I say, you know, how come you didn't pay your dues? I didn't know. I didn't know they were due. Now right. they know. Right, right. You know? Now they know. Right. And for the most part, everybody's renewing. So. Yeah, right. Yeah, because it's easy enough. Yeah. You realize, and there are probably people that you were putting on your, uh, on your personal, uh, enemies list that you realized they just didn't know yeah and now you're like oh that guy's cool after all <laughs> you know and did did we have some hiccups absolutely sure. um you know and look i i can probably count on one hand uh of members that refuse to use it they're like i'm not putting my credit card in there i'm not doing that here's, oh here's well. my 20 dollars, scott and they'll see me at a, an event and, and I'll right go, i'll grab my phone and then you just up, yeah right go, you're all set yeah sure see me next year you yeah know. that's cool so we went from you know a right. hundred of those to five yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but you, but you can still use in the. Yeah. Oh, I got to sneeze. This might be a first on the John Peckman podcast. <coughs> I don't think I've ever done that in almost <laughs> two hundred shows. Ever sneezed during the show? Wow, that's interesting. All right, you have to keep talking. I have to. I'm that's now. A, I'm now going to blow my nose on the John Peckman podcast. <laughs> well, um, so you like my shirt? You like the whole uh, baseball yeah, theme there? Pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's wild. Yeah, I'd love to say that uh, this was made by a local artist, but it was uh, it was 
Amazon and took three weeks to come from Shanghai. So oh boy, yeah. Well, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Is that a one-off? Or you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, just okay. made one. Okay. All right, I got gotcha. you. So we do. We sell bowling shirts, hats, t-shirts. Matter of fact, hold on. Yep. yep. Oh boy, here we go. Yeah, man. I, I gotta come bearing gifts. So if you want, first off. Oh, nice. All right, okay. look. And then it's a sticker, everybody. Double or triple? Oh, uh, probably double. I hope. That's what I Although thought. after I eat this Kit Kat, I might be pushing triple. There's double. Whoa, so nice, me. beautiful. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Connecticut Blue Society t-shirt. Love it. Who is that? That the, is, that's... Uh, you know who that is? Uh, you want me to guess? Yeah. I mean, could that... I'm not going to guess. Bob Orsi. Oh, okay. I didn't. I wouldn't have <laughs> guessed that. That's funny. I would not have guessed that. Or that's funny. I didn't know it was Bob when I took over, and I am making like merchandise like you can't believe. I don't believe know if anyone and, can see, if, if you can see that, but there's a, you know, the... I, the uh, Logo is a person playing harmonica that could be anybody. I wasn't going to guess. Yeah, I would never be able to guess. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Um, so do you, I, I don't, I don't remember. Did we, do you, what do you play? You play, right? We've played. We've played. Yeah. Yeah, we have. So um, I was in, uh, I guess I'll start in the beginning. Sure. Uh, I was a jazz trumpet player for 13 years oh. that's what i did as a kid that was okay. my thing uh my horns got stolen in downtown hartford oh boy um a horn i bought off of maynard ferguson's lead player stan mark and mm. a uh a jet tone mouthpiece that uh, maynard gave me um all in my case all gone never to be seen again i oh gave boy. up i just gave it up and uh picked up a guitar and about a year later, I wound up in a, a, a band in downtown Hartford in the late 80s, early 90s called The Rain. Did really oh. well. Uh, you know Debbie Piccolo? Oh, yeah. I, I love Deb. Her, the first band she was ever in was The Rain. Oh, cool. And just reminded me, i got to get Deb in here. Yeah, I love Deb. She her and awesome. I are like uh, brother and sister. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. We're, we're still very close. So awesome. um, I did that for many years. Then I had my recording studio, and I kind of focused on that more. Gotcha. Um. I recorded uh, the D. Smith Blues Band. I recorded um, Junior Krause and the Shakes okay. early on, probably yeah. late 80s. Uh, no, I'm sorry, late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, Monkey Time was the one I think I did for D. Smith. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went away, and I, you know, I have a real job, and I was working in New Jersey. And all you didn't over. go to prison. Did I you? didn't go to prison. You went away? I went away. I went away once. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, that was expunged. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, I met my wife, Ellen, and she was dragging me around all the different blues shows and everything. And we were, you know, was having a good time. I wound up uh, in a band with Michael St. George called St. George and the Dragons. And I left that band only because I was asked to take over as president. Okay. My thought was that the president of the Blues Society shouldn't be in the band. He should represent all the bands. It's just bad optics. Is yeah, what, yeah, yeah. It's the way I look yeah, at I it. Yeah, I hear you. Um, but it's it's actually so much more fun because, you know, I'll keep my guitar in a car. Um, when I go out and play, like, jams or whatever, I play originals um, nice. to keep them simple. You know, yeah, one, yeah, four, yeah. five. Uh, but I don't have to carry anything anymore. And I will be at Black Eyed Sally's and somebody will say, hey, we got the president of CTBS here, Scott. You want, right, right. want, want to go play a song? <laughs> yes, I do. And yeah, yeah, like, I, I go up and play my two songs and I go home. And it's it's that's cool. It's actually awesome. Better than being in a band <laughs> oh, and dealing yeah. with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always it. said I would never be in a band again until Michael St. George came to my house and said, I want you in this band. You're a great songwriter. Hey. We don't have originals. And I'd like you to, to sing them. And, and I said, OK, that's cool. It was flattering. And yeah. uh, he also gave me guitar lessons, and he is a very good teacher. Nice. Um, nice. So that's you know. cool. And then, uh, were you aware of um, there even being a Connecticut Blues Society around out there? I knew of it um, back from the recording days, you yeah. know, because of the D. Smith. How thing. did it ever get started in the beginning? So. Were? The Connecticut Blue Society, we're we're just turning 31 wow. this year. So yeah. last year, um, last December, we had our 30th anniversary party at Trinity wow. on Main, which was insane. We had, um, the concept was every band or some form of that won the challenge for 30 years 
we're getting on the stage. Wow. And it was like two songs, two songs, two yeah. songs. Wow. That's and crazy. And we had over 65 musicians. Hey. In one day. That's pretty cool. And it was. Uh, That's nuts. It was a round robin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was it was it was great. But uh, it started like the founding fathers, you know, like Larry Willie is one of the founding fathers. And we the blues talkers, we had we had them play. OK. Um, so it started, like I said, I think it was back in 1990. I should be running the shirt. 1993, I think it was. Um, yeah, 1993. Right. 30 years. Yep. 31 years. So um, it, it, it's it been going strong. It's had its ups. It's had its downs. Uh, one of the other things we did when we had the 30th was we got every president, every person who was ever the president to come out Whoa. and get on that stage and, and say hi. Hey, that's cool. It was really How cool. many has there been? One. So there's, there's Tom, Dominic, Peter, Ed, myself, uh, Dave. So six. I'm six. How do uh, how often does it come up? So uh, we have a um, we have a charter okay. in our nonprofit, um, and in there it says every two years the board of directors will vote for president. Okay. So any, any and if everything's cool, you, I, it's you, December is our next election. Okay. So they, you know, do you know what they're saying? Are people? Um. Ed Stack. <laughs> Ed Stack told me I'm not allowed to leave. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That's cool. Just saying, like, if you get a feel for it, going, oh, I don't know. Uh, you oh, know next vote's going to be. I work full time. Yeah, right, uh, right. I still right. run that other nonprofit for the sure. festival. Sure. Uh, I probably do about 20 hours a week for the Blue Society. Wow. Uh, between yeah. admin and working yeah, yeah. and this. And, um, you know, like last Sunday, I drove to Montville. Why? Yeah. Because there's a jam there. Yep. And I've never been, mm-hmm. and I should have gone. So I went down, and I said, hi, thank you for doing I'm what that you're dude. doing. I'm that dude. And they said, you have your guitar, and you said, yes, I do. And, and I played <laughs> two songs <laughs> with uh, the EF and Blues Band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So you're getting it done. You're probably probably yeah. safe for a while. Who's going to have better ideas than you? Hopefully Not for somebody younger. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Imagine if you... Imagine if your wife tried to take it from you. Oh, uh, she knows better. She <laughs> she wouldn't want this job. <laughs> really? So she's okay with being the president of this? Absolutely. Okay. You know? Wow. Do you guys ever get in arguments over household chores? Like sometimes so someone's the president, you're vice, and then I'm vice. And blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, so I'm going to tell you a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to get a kick out of this. <laughs> Way off the subject. Of the I can music. just imagine, yeah, I'm the pre- You yeah. think you're the president. I'm the president. <laughs> So if she's listening to this, she's sure. going to laugh and kill me. Sure. Uh. So when we were first moving in together and then bought our house, um, I said, look, there are two things that couples fight about. Mostly, it's usually money and chores. I mean, these are two huge things. Sure. Okay? Let's sure. just call them that. Sure. So I set up an entire spreadsheet of everything figured out based on you, how much you make, based on how much I make. Here's a percentage and here's what Whoa. we Whoa. And we are going to put this much in a separate account every month and all the bills will be paid. And she went, great. Whoa. So I have yet, yet to even do that. So let's move on to the next one, chores. Oh, boy. So I used to own a restaurant when I was a kid. I was a chef. I nice. said, I'll take care of the kitchen. I will cook. I will do the cleaning. I, this is my domain. I'll be happy to take it. She had all of her chores. So about the second week we were living in the house, I hear, and I walk over to the door. And, and I you're like, door. Scott's Kitchen, may I help you? I open the door, and there are two women there. And they go, uh, hello, uh, Ellen? Uh, Ellen? She goes, oh, yeah, yeah come on yeah, in. Yeah. And they just start running around cleaning everything. And I go, honey, what the hell is going on? She goes, I outsourced. She goes, I'm doing my chores. <laughs> <laughs> right. They, now, you didn't say how. Yeah. I, I, I went, as long as they get done. I went, okay. <laughs> wow. That's funny. <laughs> and they're still doing her chores today. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. That's funny. That is funny. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, now you got me thinking. <laughs> Of yeah. A spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I don't have that kind of action. Got to get that together. Chores are. Eh. I don't do any. Obviously, I don't do anything right. So, <clears throat> I do the easy ones. Okay. You know because I'm never going to do it right. You know. Oh, we don't have that. That uh, I'm. I I work from. We both work from home. Yeah. But she's on the road all the time. Okay. I'm home most of the time. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. That's I'm, funny. I don't mind. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I just run around and start cleaning things. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, so, on so just onwards and upwards with the thing, with the society. 
what is next? So how often do you have the, uh, the what, do you, what do you call it? The contest? The, the So the challenge. The challenge, okay. So we do three challenges every year. Uh, we do a solo duo, we do a band, and we do a CD. Uh-huh. The CD is just finishing up now and has to be put in the mail by tomorrow or the next day. The solo duo, one of the things that um, I'm trying to do is standardize because we've had them at different times throughout the year. I'm trying to say, okay, every um, April we start the band challenge, and then by June we have the solo challenge and, and just make it a thing. The CD challenge, we have to wait to the end of the year. Um, we have a lot of events, a lot, a lot of events. Okay. Um, I think when I took over, we had about 20 a year. Now we're up to about 34, 35 a year. Wow. Um, That's wild. So part of the problem we've had with the challenge, and we're actually doing much better than other blue societies. Um, so there's another blue society, and I won't mention who, like they canceled their challenge because they didn't have anybody sign up. Oh, wow. I get upset when we only have 15 bands sign up. Yeah, I, right. I think we should have like 20. Right, right, right. Um, but there's a, there's a reason. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, a systemic problem, and it was perception. Oh, you guys are the Hartford Blues Society. You guys don't leave Hartford. You don't care about us in New London. You don't care about us in Stanford. You don't care about us in Norwich. And so what I did was I uh, nominated uh, associate directors, so we have an associate director in uh, Norwich, now Ron Bates. Gotcha. We have an associate director in Trumbull, uh, Rob Martini. And they are my eyes and ears to find new clubs, new bands, new this. Um, Tom Carvalone now has a jam at Park City once a month. And we partnered with him to say it's the Connecticut Blues Society, Tom Carvalone Blues Jam. Gotcha. In Bridgeport. So you got eyes and ears everywhere so, now. So now we can start, you know, saying, hey, I know you guys are playing down in Trumbull and Stanford and Greenwich, but, you know, hey, come on up to Black Eyed Sally's for when we have the challenge. You know, we're trying to get a little bit, make sure that we're, we're giving everybody love and attention, not just the Hartford area. Gotcha. And we did before, but once again, it's optics. You know, it's optics. So by having these events all over the place, um, there's a brand new club. It's not a new club. Um, it's a, a, it is an, it's a new club in an old restaurant. Uh, I think it was, the, it's in Woodbury, the 1615, I think it, it's called something like that, but it's called the flat five blues tavern. Okay. And snake Hill blues played there a few weeks ago. And, uh, I, my wife and I, Ellen went and checked it out. What an awesome little place. It's like in the cellar of this really nice, like old historic restaurant yeah. tables everywhere. They have a back line. They have a drum set. They have a oh, bass cool. amp. They have two Bose towers wow. for, uh, I was, you know, for PA. I was like, wow. It's, you know, I talked to the owner. Somebody um, knows what they're doing. And so I think, I think it's, uh, loosely January 19th. I think it is not even announced yet. We're going to have, um, a membership drive where we'll have three bands play and we're trying to gather people from that area to become part of our fold. Gotcha. And then I want to do, you know, we did one of those in Norwich last year, a membership drive. We're just trying to let everybody know that, Hey, here we are. Yeah, we're yeah, here to yeah. help. You yeah. Know? We're a nonprofit. Right. Right. And you're the, you're, yeah, you're doing more outreach probably then. Yeah. Cause you're the spreadsheet King. You just figure <laughs> it out. I, I, I am a geek. You know, that's all right though. That sounds like you're getting it done. So what do you do? You just have uh, various levels, I would imagine, of band. Like they, you, how do you win? How do you whittle them down? To, oh, to a challenge? Yeah. So we use the same criteria that they use in Memphis. So it's, it's actually their score sheet is basically a mirror image of our score sheet. Um, and what it is, it starts with a blues content and it's one to ten. That is the biggest category, the most important category. It's also the, the one category that there's no real thing that you can just point at. What do you think blues is? Yeah, yeah. So that is times four. The next is originality. Are you playing originals? Are you playing old songs but making them your own? That can be original. Or are you just a cover band? That's times three. Then it's vocals. Then it's uh, musicianship. And then stage presence. And those are all times two. And then you get a total aggregate score. And what we do is we have usually three preliminary rounds between three and five bands each round. We have a winner, and then we go to the next round. And, and they play. Round. Oh, they play. They play for 25 minutes at Black Eyed Sally's. We have the full back line there. Mm -hmm. They get up just like they would in Memphis. They get up. They play. We have a timer. You lose a point for every 10 seconds you go over. Whoa. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's... it's um, <laughs> just be in the middle of a song. 
Da, 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 da. Oh, wait. we have uh, we have uh, never... we have Terry, and she uh, has her little signs, and she's like, you know, two minutes and yeah. one minute, and yeah. just exactly like they do in Memphis. Wow. Uh, and then we whittle that down, so we'll wind up with three challenge winners, and then we have one wild card, which is the total aggregate score, the highest next highest score, and then we have our finals. Nice. Um, you know, we bring in uh, the best judges that I can find for that the finals type sure. thing. Um, you know, one funny thing is uh, there's a, a friend of mine from way back in the day, Jim Chapteline. Sure. Uh, and uh, I called him and said, hey, I'd like you to judge. And he said, I, I hate music contests, Scott. It's, oh, it's, it's against yeah. everything I believe in. And, he, and then he goes, and then in 30-something years, you've never asked me for a favor. Okay, I'll do it. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> and now funny. he does it every year. And, oh, okay. And he's a great judge because he's not, yes, this is a blues contest. Right. But he's not skewed to what everybody else you know what I mean? I think He's so. the most level-headed judge yeah. that we have, and yeah, I yeah. love having him. And every year, I'm like, "You can do it again for me, Jim. Oh, Come on, so Jim. Funny. Come on, buddy." Thanks. Playing at the main. Oh yeah. Shino- I'll see you there tomorrow. Okay. All right. Good. Shinola's. Shinola. Main- oh, I love it. It'll be over by now, but by the time this airs, but <clears throat> Shinola's are playing tomorrow up at the main pub. Um, I've seen them there at the oh, main yeah. pub before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Playing tomorrow. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, right. But that's the type of thing that I try to do in the finals, you know. I want to get people that won the challenge, like a Ryan Hart that won it three times. I want to get him to be a judge because he knows what it takes. Right, right. Um, And everybody's been really supportive. Everybody's been really... Um, we used to have a lot of judges, and I narrowed it down to three to seven, depending on, on what we're doing. Yeah. Um, just because I, 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 it's more quantity over quantity for me, you know. I yeah, just, right. Just want to make sure we do the same thing for the solo, and then the CD challenge. We get the CDs in. I send them off to like WCNI, some people in different places, and then they listen to them and they fill out kind of the same thing, yep. little different categories. Pick a winner and we ship it down. Nice. Uh, but this year it's Carl Ritchie and the 706 Union Ave, and it's uh, James Limerick Kerr duo. Okay. Both of them won two years ago. Well, that was going to be my next question. We're having a repeat of two years ago. Wow. Yeah. So you can win more than once. You can. Wow. You can. Um, so uh, we're, you know, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun. And Carl, you know, learned a lot down there. Carl and I are best friends. Yeah. Uh, and he learned a real lot down there. So he knows kind of what it takes. Um, I judged, used to judge down in Memphis until I took over the Blue Society. Now I cool. have a, you know. Uh, but I have been nominated and accepted. I'm now on the affiliate committee for the Blues Foundation. Hey, that's cool. Which basically is just there to help other affiliates like the Blues Society navigate through the weeds of nonprofit. And, yeah, right. Which right. is a little crazy. Um, what's your day gig, may I ask? Does it involve that? Nope. A whole different thing. Um, I design video surveillance okay. for large like airports. Wow. Things like that. I work for Motorola Solutions. Wow. They're, okay. they're an amazing American you know, company out of Chicago, 30,000 employees, 25,000 employees. Cool. They take very, very good care of me. I've been there 13 years, and wow. I love my job. Oh, hey, that's cool. I mean, I love what I do. That's cool. And you still have enough time to do all of this, too. They actually encourage me to do nonprofit work. Hey, hey take today off and work on your nonprofit. They're wonderful when it comes to Oh, that. that's cool. Um. They even have a matching gift program. So like the Connecticut Rhythm and Blues Festival, uh, my wife Ellen and I will donate money uh, and they'll double it. Nice. So, I mean, they're, they're yeah, just yeah, a yeah. wonderful company. Hey, that's cool. You know, I'll all. be there till I retire. Like they'll, I don't even think I, if they fired me, I wouldn't believe them. I just show up for work and log <laughs> on and like, like, nope, sorry, can't fire me. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. Um, how did your original interest in the blues specifically how did that start um you know i did a little when i was recording but i really it's really ellen because ellen was um she owned a company called ask me music and she used to be like a booking manager okay uh, for like one-eyed johnny and the grave yeah. diggers and yeah she had like a whole bunch of bands and then she started working just for clubs so she was doing like the maple tree and she would do some work with james and black eyed sally okay. um, and she would drag me around uh, to all the different clubs when we were first dating. And what were you in, music were you into? Uh, so my old band, The Rain, we were like a 90s grungy yeah. type band, yeah. you know, like Stone Temple Pilots. So you're like aware was, of the blues, but not... Yeah, the, yeah. But, but not... 
And then what happens? She's dragging you around. She's dragging like, me around. I'm meeting all these amazing musicians, and I'm you know I'm watching them. I remember the first time I saw. Um, do you know who Hash Brown is? No. So he's from Bristol originally. He moved to Texas about fifty years ago. Okay. Uh, he comes and he he does all the he does a lot of the camps down the south and. Um, he's a guitar player and he teaches harmonica and he's amazing, but his family's still from Bristol and he comes in every year and they play up at Vincent's at uh, Worcester and he yeah. plays Black Eyed Sally's and he plays, um, so funny. my house concerts, my living nice. room. Nice. Um, but I remember the first time I saw him and he's got that Texas style. That's, um, it, you know, in that jazzy sloppy style, you know, what I I'm think so. you know, it's, you know, it's like, wah, 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 you know, it's a, you know, and I remember the first time I saw him and I was like, I can't tell if he's a genius or he's horrible. And I, I oh, didn't boy. know. And then the more I watched him, like within 30 seconds, my brain went, oh, it's genius. Oh, this is absolute genius. This oh, is, wow. this is incredible. Cool. And then I listened to some other players from that era and I went, oh, wow, he's really good. Like, oh my God, he's really, yeah, really yeah, good. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's something it, you got to tune into. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just a, a very different, it's got that kind of jazz chord but you know just a lot of notes in places you wouldn't think they were and then they resolve and you're just like how did he do that and huh. you know and he probably does he know how he does it oh yeah oh, yeah. oh he does. Oh, it's a whole style it's west like okay. western swing okay you know but uh not a style that i was you know you know i'm a, you know i'm a pearl jam kid sure sure that kind of yeah. thing you know I hear you. Uh, you know but you know i've been doing you know i've been playing around the blues now for over 10 years so okay. um and you just got more and more deep into it. Yeah, a lot of it had to do with not just... Uh, so there were a couple things that made me flip from all the other styles of music to mostly blues is what I was now. And one of them is the community of the Blues Society, the people. Oh. Those are the, the, that's why, I, I mean, I really liked Ed Stack. I really liked, like, you know, all these different people. Yeah. And, and I just, it was this community. And then that got bigger and bigger and bigger. The other thing that really intrigued me was like the blues jams. So if you're a rock and roll guy, you you can't walk up to a blues jam, sign up, get up there and say, okay, we're going to play this song and here's all the chords, all the changes and the bridge right. and everything like that. Right. But you can certainly walk up and go, hey, this is an A, it's one, five, four with a quick change. And everybody knew what yeah, you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. And all you got to do is look at you and say, yeah. Okay, we're in. Yeah, it's a shuffle you know, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm gonna start and and that I was like, wow, that is cool, that is really cool. Yeah. And so I was a songwriter, always have been since I was a little kid. I started writing more simplistic one four five songs without major changes. I have songs that have really cool changes and bridges. Sure. But I have a handful, probably five to seven of them, in my pocket that I can go to any jam, and go. Never, t never played with you guys before. And we're going to one, four this. five quick changes to yep. shuffle. And we're, it's your tune. And it's my tune. And I did that on Sunday down in Montville. And it was awesome with the FM blues band. Hey. And, was, and that really was like, wow, that's cool. That's yeah. really cool. That's, that kind of got me into the blues a little bit. And then, um, it's modular. You know, I was playing really mostly open and bar chords. I was a rhythm guitar player, lead singer for the band years ago. So my guitar playing was basically adequate and still is. Yeah. But then Michael St. George, when I started in St. George of the Dragons, part of the deal was he's going to teach me. Right, you and were saying. He would come over and he'd be like, okay, today we're going to go. You're only going to play one note, one string every time. And when you get that, we'll go on the next lesson. Nice. And started, and suddenly my playing got a little better and a little better. My writing got a little better and a little better. And it was cool. And uh, that's some of the things that made me just absolutely fall in love with the blues. Nice, nice. Um, I don't want I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to ask like some of your favorite blues albums because that's for the end. Those are the wrap up questions or the Desert Island albums. So, all right. So let's think ahead. So usually we're not, we're not close. To, we're halfway done. When I get to the end, I don't know if, how many shows you listen to, but at the end, I usually a I have wrap up questions that kind of generally um, answer the things that maybe we didn't answer. And one of them is like five Desert Island albums, like five, five of your favorite albums. But I don't want to ask that question now because I don't want to ask you what blues albums turned you on because then that might spoil that question. Well, that's going to be a different answer. I'm not going to give you blues albums. Good. Because those are not my favorite albums. Oh, okay. All right. Um, All right. Good. And I'm that's not good. even listening to albums. I'm listening to songs. I got you. So like an example, right now I'm obsessed with Pee Wee Clayton. Okay. Creighton. Yeah. Creighton. Yeah. I just heard his playing and went, oh my God, I love that. Yeah, like yeah. that's great. And now I'm trying to emulate that yeah. style. I was like, that sounds like 
me playing like but yeah, really yeah. good and so much better and why can't i play like that and, yeah right um what are know, some of the other players that turn you on like that well a lot of it like i said probably happens all the time it does but i gotta tell you other than bluesville on satellite radio i don't listen to blues at home I don't even listen to music at home. Really? Uh, yeah, I mean, you just I just listen to the clacking of your. No, I just I have uh, I'm out every weekend. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's right, all the, right, right. the local bands. Sure, sure. So when you ask somebody asks me about guitar players, I just start mentioning. I say like well, Paul Gabriel. You know, I'm gonna, right, I'm, gonna right. I'm gonna give you all the locals because those are the people that I like. Wow, that yeah, guy yeah. can play. You yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, people like that. You know. Yeah. I mean, some of the best guitar players that I like personally are the locals. They're the you know, I like Tom Forrest a lot. I like uh, Paul Gabriel a, a lot. I, Michael St. George is insane. I mean, yeah. you know, and he's not just blues. He's he's everything, you know. Hmm. Um, like I said, Hash Brown, I just mentioned. He's, you know, those styles, they're just. Yeah, Jim Chapdelaine. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's funny. I uh, My old band, The Rain, we were one of the first bands in his studio. Is that like, right? Like, he, 91? Wow. We still Down the, in the basement. We still have the cassette. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have the cassette. Yeah, that's killer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the basement. I remember that. I just found like eight of those cassettes. Really? Yeah. You better digitize that. Uh, I know. Right quick. I know. You know? And actually, Debbie's not even on that because before we hired Debbie, we had a drum machine. Oh, boy. <laughs> right. That's funny. Yeah. We were looking for a drummer. Uh, but we had to get a cassette out to get yeah yeah yeah, yeah. gigs, yeah, so yeah. we just went in with that, and then we we then Debbie came out. That's funny. So yeah, that happens. Yeah, far out. Um, you mentioned uh, Memphis and being in Memphis and all that. What's that all about? So every year, all the challenge winners from the world wind up going down to Memphis oh. in January. Okay. Uh, this year it's early; it's like January sixth, um, and they all the bands go down. And every club on Beale Street, 95% of the clubs on Beale Street become part of the Blues Foundation. Right. And they have solo duo, you know, preliminaries. And then, um, you know, the, the, the finals are at the Orpheum Theater. Uh, but it's, it's basically Wednesday, Thursday are the preliminaries. Uh, Friday is the um, semifinals. And Saturday night are the finals. Mm. And then every night after every event, like say it ends at 11, Bam! A blues jam starts. Yeah, right. Sure. With major players. Yeah, like yeah. Major, yeah, yeah. you know, players showing up and this and that, and it's it's insane. Yeah, yeah. This will be our sixth year going down. Oh wow, cool. Um, last year was a disaster. They had a snowstorm, and Memphis Whoa. can't handle. Snow yeah, storms. right. Yeah, sure. Uh, and ice. Uh, there were probably eight bands that never made it. They couldn't oh, get flights wow. out. Um, club. There were two hotels that had to close because their pipes froze and water was. I mean, it was. They're just not prepared in Memphis Crazy. for yeah. that kind of weather. Yeah, yeah. So we're really kind of hoping it's not that bad this year. Mm. Um, but it was, uh, you know, normally we're out every night. You're on the street. There's, you know, people yeah. doing acrobatics up and down Beale. And yeah, it yeah. was just, there was snow. You know, there was oh, piles wow. of snow and ice. And, that's weird. And uh, that's how, that's rare. It's like rare. super rare. Yeah, it's rare. I remember one time, um, A to the Bar, we used to go to Roanoke, Virginia. That was one of our hot spots. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we would pack this place and uh they had like a freak it was like an inch of snow in roanoke and like the club was dead like everybody freaked out and of course in new england we're like dude i'm going there's a gig we're going yeah you know it was like i've driven through blizzards and it was like the whole the whole town shut down because there was like an inch of snow on the ground they I was like what i think memphis has like two plows Right like too. Right, and I'm not. Right. I'm not. I'm not right. exaggerating. Right, and the dudes who used to drove, drive them died. Yeah, and, and, since, since before they used them last. And probably. the airport. Uh, I mean, right. flights were getting diverted because they couldn't plow the you, runway. You, you couldn't imagine. land. Wow, it was, uh, that's crazy. There was musicians stuck all over the place. I remember the Buffalo Blues Society. Um, they wound up just sending a, a, a thing saying, "Sorry, uh, we right. can't get out of Buffalo." Right. We can't even leave our airport to get down to you. Well, that's understandable um, in Buffalo. Other people were uh, trying to drive, and the driving was, I mean, if you don't drive in the snow like right. we do on a regular well, basis. Well, that's what I'm saying. In Roanoke, they, they, everyone was afraid to drive. I was like, are the you Ubers kidding? and taxis, yeah. they, it, was, it was a disaster. How many blues songs have been written snowing in Memphis? <laughs> I don't know. Write it right now. <laughs> snowing, Memphis snowstorm. This was even the worst part. So the Orth Ortheum Theater, which is this really cool historic theater, and it 
it's packed. Like yeah, it's sure. just completely packed. And that's where they had the finals. Yeah. Yeah. All the pipes were frozen. Yeah. Right. So they oh, bust, they, they had trucks in of all the porta potties outside because the bathroom, you couldn't use them. And they had, you know, thousands of people Good there. Good Lord. And it was 30 degrees. Hey, you wanted, the, you wanted, you wanted the blues, <laughs> yeah. right? How's this? You want some struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Have a nice porta potty. How's that? How you feel? Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty crazy. Um, wow. We were there once before when it snowed and, you know, hey, it was one day and then it was gone. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, some of the clubs were like, oh, we're not sure what we're going to do. But this was an absolute disaster. Wow. So we're all praying that that doesn't happen again this year. Yeah. Uh, but it's usually a great time. Yeah. You know, it's a good game. You know, I call it a 10 pounder because, you know, I'm gaining 10 pounds down oh, there. Wow. I mean, it's just Dyer's right. burgers, which right. are deep fried cheeseburgers. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm having yeah. two of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, here, here's a. All right, let me think. So you have your I'm trying to think of how to ask this question. So you have the the scoring criteria for the you know the winner. Let's just say a band winner of the of the the uh, the competition. Um, would you? How different would a winner? sound from year to year you know what i mean like oh completely sometimes right that's interesting too. um carl won with uh, scott bronas as the singer and well, this year he played with uh, johnny marino as the singer it, it, right i mean but i mean there's no like um like you would think you're scoring based on the way the criteria breaks down you're not looking for an ideal like it should sound like this like something you have in mind no but you ever zoom out and realize that the winners have um, a uh, a trait in a trait or traits in common? Um, well, you know, on is the, that, do you know what I mean? It's I think weird, I do. Like on the traditional, the the, the real traditional. Like, what if you found bands, out that every win winner sounds exactly the same? Um, I not likely. It, it doesn't happen. Right, right. Uh, very often, happen. but you know, they're your traditional blues band. We have blues bands that have a little, you know, slice of R and B in it. You know, okay. they they a little yeah. bit more funky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we had Blue Devil Blues win a couple of years ago, or uh, no, last year. They're they're blues. They're absolutely blues, but they're a lot of R and B. Okay. And then you have like Carl is not R and B at all. Carl Ritchie is their traditional blues band. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. That so you do get a lot of that that mixture. <clears throat> You know, I, one thing I try to tell the so bands... So if someone's, like, stage presence takes them over the line, might be... Le I'm just saying, like... Uh, so authenticity is not what you're looking for. It's so, the aggregate of all of the criteria. Yeah, and that's why each part is weighted. That's why, like, uh, right. blues content is times four, stage presence is times two. I you know, you. that's why. Um, but look, I mean, there was a couple of years, including this year, that, I mean, you're talking about a point difference. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. Half a point difference between sure. the winner and the second place person. Imagine that. Um, and, you know, a lot of it can come down to, you have 25 minutes to play a set. And yep. what I tell every band when they're coming in, I said, understand a couple things. First off, it's a 25 minute set. So you want to make sure you're about 23 minutes, 24 minutes. You don't want to be 26. Right, you know, right, you right. You need to, sure, you know, sure. you don't want to be sure. cut off. Sure. You are playing to these scores. These scores... So if you play a cover and the crowd goes wild and it's a popular cover that everybody knows, that's a detriment to you. That that doesn't help you with judges. That hurts you. Right. Well, the crowd loved this. Yes, but the, the idea is to be original. Right. You know, so take an old cover, that nobody obscure cover right. that people don't know, make it your own, have audience participation. Right. The other thing is, you know, some bands will play a song and then they stop. Oh, hey, thanks everyone. Uh, what, what do you want to hear next? Sure. Uh, hello, sure. Hartford. How are you? No, 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 right. no, no. You need to play a show. Yeah. It's a yeah. 25 minute show. That's gotcha. what they expect in Memphis that they expect that, you know, um, if the song ends, and the singer wants to talk a little bit that you're still kicking those drums and the bass player's right. still going a little bit right. and then they're going into the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to see that. And I don't just say that because it's what I want. I'm telling you because that's what I, that's what the winners, the it's people that are... going to the scores up. You know, when you go down to Memphis, you'll watch all the bands that move to the semifinals. Those are the bands. They look and act polished. Yeah, they yeah. want to see a polished act. Uh, a great example of that is on the scorecard. It says, you know, 
what a one is and what a 10 is. Okay. Well, a 10 says ready to play a major festival. Yeah. Right. You know, nine may say ready to headline a, you know, a local festival and eight may, you know, ready to, to you know, to play. And, and the three is like a local band in a club, garage band, you know, right, that kind right, of thing. Right, right, right. Sure. Ready to play in a major festival. In a major festival, they, this is what they want. They want, they want a show. Yeah, yeah. And so that's what they're looking for. Um, and, and I found that the scores definitely, you can see that. You can yeah, yeah, see yeah. that in, in the scoring. I that's mean, cool. The last couple of years, I mean, I wouldn't, I used to judge all the time. Uh, I wouldn't want to be a judge. I mean, the four bands that competed were every one of them could represent Connecticut and be amazing at it. Wow, they were great, and some yeah. of them were very different. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we had a very like power trio rock blues band that made it to the finals. We had a very traditional, and then we had more of an R and B. Every one of those could have represented us beautifully. Yeah, right. Right. Um, and I'm hoping that next year one of those other two might wow. you know might might get up there and win because they were really good. So how about this? Um, when if you know that your winner is going to memphis let's say someone is the best traditional winner they win because they're the most traditional of connecticut but then they go to memphis and get completely wiped out by other people like you want to represent Connecticut, though, too. Does that come into consideration when you're judging, or is it just for this competition? Well, it's for this you, competition, but you I, know what I mean. I try to pick judges that I I have a couple of judges that are very traditional. Yeah, I have a Jim Chapdelaine who loves right. all music. Yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. So he knows all. Yeah, yeah, you know, sure. he's not looking for the jug, 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 no, jug, no. jug. He's right. looking for wow. But if it's <clears> the best <throat> junga junga, he'll also know it. Absolutely, right, right, you know. Sure. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the other thing I try to do is, and it, I can't always do this, but I try to get a guitar player as a judge, a bass player as a judge, a drummer as a judge. Gotcha. That was something that we've never done before. That's something that I <clears throat> thought was kind of important. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, I right. want everybody to be represented. So. Interesting. It's pretty cool. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, there's nothing. Look, traditional blues is still alive and well in Memphis and can still do well, even though they've, they've been like pushing a little bit more R&B. Mm-hmm. Um, but it really is, to me, it's who did the best show. Who did, okay. the, who did, who, who, who entertained the audience and where, when you're a point off, it's like, did you have more originals than they did? Mm. Did you sound more original than they did? Hmm. Was your stage presence just a little... You're talking about... Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. If yeah. you've got 100 and... Let's say, I think it's 130 point possibility. Yeah. And the average score is 101. I mean, it could be 101.8 to 101.9. Wow. I mean, it's that close. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... It's interesting. Um, I think we. I think we all know, but I'm just thinking maybe there might be some people that might tune into this that don't know. So how far would you have to go out to not be a blues act? How would you uh, uh, describe that to somebody who doesn't? I mean, we know that generally <clears throat> one, four, fives, those are the chords that you're going to use kind of, you're going to stray within the handful of uh, forms that we use in the blues. What would be too far out? So that that's the multi-million dollar question. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And that's the blues content portion. Oh, I got you. Okay. okay. Yeah. And that's what is blues, you know? Right, which I is mean, a question I'm not asking you to no, answer. No, I'm I, just bringing up the question. Cause. Every judge, I will read. So the other thing that the uh, the judges do is they put comments. Okay. And I tell them, don't just say, you guys suck. I hate you. You're not a blues band. Right, right. I say, you may hate them, but the person next to you may love them. And these people might make it to the next round. Give constructive criticism. Say, in order to make it to the uh, to, to win this challenge or make it to the finals, you should look at doing this or maybe change this a little bit or, you know, maybe you guys are a little too rock and you should be a little bit more blues. Right. Or, you know, the, that kind of thing. Be constructive mm-hmm. type of thing with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but blues content, I try to bring in different judges that I know personally have different thoughts. I'll have one judge, uh, I know one judge right off the bat and if you don't, aren't doing that one, four, five, they're going to say, this isn't blues. Right. I know that. And that's it. I, you know, they're not going to, they, but they won't really, if they gave horrible scores for bands like that, then I wouldn't even be able to have them. 
but they are very traditional. I have other. So they're kind of like the backstop. Yeah. So in I, a way. But, you know, I kind of have uh, try to have a mix of a little bit of everything. Yep. Um, but you know, again, what is blues? Right. You know I mean? Right. 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 You know. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I am much more liberal than uh, some of the other people that I'm in this little blue okay. society. Right. With. Right. Um, you know, I've had somebody say to me, well, Jake Kulak, that's not blues. Uh-huh. And I'll be like, no, it's blues. It's okay. absolutely blues. Okay. Absolutely blues. All right. uh, and I've had him play many times and I just say, Hey, you can blues it up for me. He's like, absolutely. And he slams it, yeah, slams yeah. it. Yeah, no yeah. one can say, sure. You know, at yeah. that, um, 30th anniversary party, what we did is we had Jake Kulak, the young, the blues talkers, the original. Mm. So we had Jake open the show. Yeah, yeah. We had the Blues Talkers. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, and he just rocked it. And Paul Gabriel, I think, got up there and played with him. And it was just awesome, you know? So, sure. but some people think the rock blues isn't blues. Some people think R&B isn't blues. I'm like, hmm, it's a rhythm and blues, huh? Write right. the title. It's right, a, right, it's right. Right here. I was just going to say. Yeah. B-O-U-E-S. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. You know. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's funny. It's interesting. Yeah, cool. But, you know, on our Facebook um on our uh, Facebook group, we have 6,700 people on that. Whoa. That was really started. I believe Mark Zaretsky started that. Uh, but there's three admins. There's Peter Ross, there's myself, and there's Mark Zaretsky. And there's 6,700 followers in that, right? There isn't a day that goes by that I don't have to get on there and delete things or not let people in for trying to sell, you know, elephant yeah, right. neutering sure, or sure, you know, sure. whatever it is. Sure. Um, and I have people all the time, like I'm looking at the profile. Oh yeah. Okay. We'll let him in. And then all of a sudden these country songs get started. You know, and I'm oh, like, delete, delete, delete. Yeah, yeah. I actually deleted one in the car right out front here today. Wow. You know, I was like that, this is nothing to do with. So me. they're Not just, even close. they're just botting any, they're just c- trying to get their music and then out they get in, you know, yeah, or whatever. And then I have to be the big bad wolf who goes, yeah, no, it's not yeah. happening. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. It's, it's... Wow. But if you want your vents cleaned. I, I, I know. I can tell you how to get your vents cleaned. Your vents? Yeah, if you want your house vents cleaned, because they try to get into our Facebook group every day, four times a day. Whoa. Or wow. your car detailed. We have oh, car right, detailing right, right. too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, all those guys. Yeah, that's cool. Far out. Don't ever mention my vents again. <laughs> <laughs> um, wrap up questions. Sure. So onwards and upwards with the thing. Absolutely. Is what you're doing. We're, you're in the middle of it. You're not going to get voted out anytime soon because you're getting it done. Yeah. Well, you know. It's all cool. I'll just start coming to shows again and have fun. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, right, right. Feel free to right. get rid of me. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. All right. The wrap up questions. So Desert Island albums. I can probably only name a few. That's fine. Rush, Permanent Waves. Sure. And my, uh, you want to know what? That's when I quit Rush. No. That was the sellout album to me. Permanent Waves? Oddly. That was that was a hemispheres. I was good. And then I'm like, oh no! Didn't the whole Tom Sawyer thing it screw it up for you? Yeah. No, I was out before that. Oh, per- permanent okay. waves. I didn't like. No, permanent <laughs> waves. That was uh, like I'm hardcore. Yeah, <laughs> that was uh, that was that. That's funny. Um, but yeah, sure. Uh, believe it or not, I'm, and I'm going back to my childhood because it's what influenced me. I don't remember the name of the record, uh, the album name, but it was Parliament. Okay. And there was a song on there called Flashlight. Oh yeah, and I just when yeah, I heard that yeah. as a kid, yeah. I was like, um, yeah. yeah, Super Tramp, yeah, yeah, interesting. You know, I mean yeah. that, yeah, anything from the Doors. Oh I yeah, I was a big Doors yeah, fan too. as a kid. Yeah, me too. Um, and then when I got into my teens, that's where I started branching out into more um, modern rock. Mm. And I'd say probably one of my all-time favorite albums that I still listen to today, like listened to yesterday, was Fables of the Reconstruction by REM. Hey. That out every song on there, um, yeah. and I learned that if I could play Peter Buck's part, yeah, yeah. I could call myself a guitar player, and I still can't uh, well, on some of the songs. I can yeah, play yeah, a couple yeah. of them, yeah, like yeah, Green yeah. Grow, and a couple. There's a couple songs, uh, yeah, on that I can, but not very many. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's yeah, that's cool. kind of where you know. Yeah. And I know there's no blues albums on there, and I apologize about that. But hey, man, you know, whatever. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, Desert Island food. Oh, pizza. Oh, okay. That's easy. Okay. Pizza, um, French fries is a huge thing. And I'd say ice cream, but it'd melt. So Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got one shot at the ice cream on a desert island. Oh, boy. You got, right, you got right, 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, no, I'm... Uh, what's your pizza spot? Um, so 
I live in Avon. Okay. Um, and there is a pizza place there called Little City. Okay. And it's really, really good. And then there's one. It's this little hidden gem. It's called E and D. They actually won best pizza in the Las Vegas Pizza Challenge. Oh, wow. Like okay. this little, you yeah, know, yeah, not yeah. New Haven, not you yeah, know, yeah, not, yeah. not Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know. Years and years and years ago, I lived in Brooklyn, and I would just go to the corner. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Here's yeah, to sure. Fold sure. it in half, and away I went. Yeah, yeah. No, um, we're lucky. I'm a straight up pepperoni pizza guy. Yep. You can throw some bacon on it, but yep. you know, just pepperoni, and I'm a very happy person. I had to go to um, before I came here. I was in West Haven today, and I went to some parties, which is a little neighborhood spot that if you know, you know. It's like one of those things, and um, it's not. New Haven brick oven per se, but it's but it's really good. It's got its own thing. So like whenever I'm in that neighborhood, I give myself a little extra time to do a throwdown. And they make um, their own sausage. So you get their sausage pizza, which well, I don't see, I would always like. I would get that if They're, they made their own it's, sausage. It's excellent. So anyway, they'll never have no idea I exist. But I will say something, and you know, you're recording it, so I can't say I won't yeah, admit yeah. it. Um, I recently, within the last six, eight months had a detroit pizza oh yeah yeah i'm gonna say i really i mean i'm not a sicilian pizza guy yeah, yeah, and yeah. i do like like uh you know uh what's a whole deep dish but i, yeah. I don't call it a pizza i just yeah, yeah, think yeah. it's a yummy ball of cheese yeah. and everything you know yeah, it's with yeah. some dough in it but i had a, a motor city type pizza yeah and I, I was like wow okay this is pretty damn good the only it's, the, it's, it's i don't not, know if i got spoiled the detroit pie in my neck of the woods is um is christo's in Wallingford. And uh, it's the first time I tried a Detroit pie there. And their pie is good anyway. But their Detroit pie was really good. And I don't know how authentic it is. But I had a Detroit pie somewhere else that I won't mention because it was just not, they didn't get it. But for all I know, Christos doesn't get it. But they do a great job. Like there's their Detroit pie. I was like, oh, okay, this is cool. So every once in a while, me and the wife will be like, Detroit pie. Uh, you know, so... Uh, I guess the but concept of that was it was uh, the other name they called it was like a grandma grandma's pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was grandma would take a pan and yeah, she just yeah, put, she didn't do. care about it being round. She just put it in and let it. Now I'm gi- I'm giving shout outs. Now I'm going to go looking for endorsements. So <laughs> so Slice works up on the Pike, the Berlin Pike near where I live. He's um, what's the place? There's one in Middletown. Um, Ilianos. Ilianos, yeah. He's like a Ilianos part of that crew. And he opened just, they don't have dining, but he has slice works up there, up on the, the Berlin Turnpike, heading up the pike. And he does grandma, and it's really good. Oh, yeah. So shout out to your places, Zapartis, uh, Il- yeah, Ilianos, Christos, and Wallingford and, for the Detroit and uh, slice works. Yeah, Little City and E&D. Well, yeah, yeah. right. They so, were, so. you know, it's pretty damn good. Hey, man, you know. All right, one more quick question. Sure. Uh, any show concert that you have seen with your eyeballs that changed your life in one shot that you just went, oh, this? Prince. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's I, an easy and one. I got to say, this has got to be like 85. Where? Uh, Hartford Civic Center. Love some, Sexy. Some, yeah, it might be. In the round. Yeah, I can't. Because I saw that. I was there with my uh, a couple of my buddies from high school. I yeah. think we were 15 or 16. Yeah. I mean, I'm 56. So it yeah. means. Yeah. And I saw, and I, I, I mean, I heard the record, I heard this, I heard that, and then I went, and I went, oh, and we had the bleeder seats, and yeah, I, yeah. I just, I watched him perform and went, oh my God. Yeah, oh, sure. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, that would do it. And I've seen hundreds and hundreds of shows, you know, the old, he used to do the Lollapalooza tours and all that kind of stuff, and you know. Yeah, I think Prince would take the cake. You know, but I, Prince was the one act that I went, oh my God. Yeah. You know, oh, That's an easy, oh my God. Wow. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Yeah, I saw him twice. I saw him at Oakdale. That was crazy. That, that would have been great. amazing. It was amazing. I would have loved that show. Yeah, yeah. Because it was just straight music. It yeah. was more just music to show. And he was killing it. Yeah, crazy. Um, all right. You know what? Do you have anything else real quick? Real quick. Yes, uh, we have uh, the Connecticut Blue Society Jam coming up at the Pine Loft this Sunday. Which I could throw a rock from my house and hit the Pine Loft. Well, Maybe I'll come back. over and say when, hi. When is it? It goes uh, 1 to 5. When? Uh, on Sunday. Oh, maybe I will come. So it's the first okay. Sunday of every month. Oh, all right. Um, you might see me. Then we have the Connecticut Rhythm and Blues Festival on the 9th. That is amazing. Get your tickets now. All seats are reserved, so you just go online, ctbluesfest.com. 
Um, you know, pop that, your credit card in, buy your tickets. That's November 9th, kids. Uh, on December 8th, this is not announced yet, but we have, um, I'm calling it MAP, which is our members appreciation party, just like our 30th last year, but it's going to be at Trinity. Nice. It's free to all members, $10 for non-members. Cool. Uh, I've already got two bands lined up. I'm getting a third, maybe a jam. Uh, and that's about rounds up for the rest of the year for us. So Sounds good. Like it. Cool. Scott Sebastian, the president. <laughs> Connecticut Blues Society, vice president of Connecticut Rhythm and Blues Festival. Correct. And did you hear this, Dave? So he's vice president of the Connecticut Rhythm and Blues Festival. His wife is the president. I'm like, how does, how is, what's your household like? Uh, I you know, do. I'm, you think you're the president. I'm the president. At the CTRB. <laughs> we did this. <laughs> I, I, I literally step back. I, she makes a decision. I do not. See? I literally. This I, is how it gets done. Yep. Yep. I hear you. She has a vision and she gives us money. Hey. For the blues education. So look, go for it. Huh? Yep, that's right. I'll empty the garbage. That's fine. Sure. Yep. Be happy to. Cool. Thanks. Hey, you got it. Scott Sebastian was here. Thank you. I appreciate it. We finally we got it done. We got it done, boys. We did. Girls. Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance. Beautiful downtown Portland, Connecticut. John Packman Podcast. That's who we are. Uh, come over the bridge. Pull a Yui. Park in front of the music store with the red neon light. Like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your neighbors. Tell your pets. Tell your plants. Dave will tell you how to have your very own podcast here in our beautiful studio. Maybe you might want to do something like that. You never know. <clears throat> never know. It's possible. Scott Sebastian, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. That is all. If you'd like to start your own podcast, give us a call at Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance. Our professionally designed podcast space is here for all your recording needs. Rent out our studio to do interviews with up to four people to record audiobooks, social media content, and all other recorded material. Our rentals include a private studio along with our professional-grade podcasting equipment, and we can customize your output to whatever your needs are. We also have green screen capabilities, which will expand to uh, video capability if you so wish. So check us out here at convalley.net forward slash podcast.